Heavenly Delusion just wrapped up its first season to much critical acclaim from the anime community. And so, even though I don't usually do this type of video for shows that are this recent, I mean... I just gotta talk about it. Cause I mean, come on, like what else is there to convince you to watch? Demon Slayer? <laughs> but before I even say anything, let me just say this. Heavenly Delusion is a bit more of a graphic show, if you know what I mean. And by graphic, I mean legitimately f***ed up. Not that it's any more or less crazy than some other famous shows, but there are a lot of things that happen in this anime that may not be for the faint of heart. So if that bothers you, consider this your trigger warning or whatever you want to call it. And see, me just saying that alone will convince a small disturbed person portion of y'all to watch the show. I bet your ears perked up and you licked your lips the minute I mentioned graphic, yeah. Don't deny it, you sickos. But you would never guess that this show is like that if you just watched the cinematic opening sequence or the ending sequence that sounds straight out of a rom-com. And despite all the other disturbing content, a good part of Heavenly Delusion feels like a serene, atmospheric walk through a post-apocalyptic world. It's almost like a slice of life in the way it takes its time with scenes. So many shows in both Eastern and Western media forget to just let a scene breathe, because it's always bang, 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 we gotta get to the next thing. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me give y'all a quick spoiler-free premise. This is all stuff you'll see in the first episode, so don't think I'm giving anything major away. Heavenly Delusion tells two stories. One story follows Mar and his bodyguard Kiriko as they travel across post-apocalyptic Japan in search of a place called Heaven. Along the way, they encounter these sleep paralysis demon-looking things called man-eaters. And of course, they both have hidden pasts that they're trying to find answers to. I mean, it wouldn't be fun if we got all the answers straight up, right? The other story follows a group of children living in a walled area called, yep, you guessed it, Heaven. They live relatively peaceful lives attended to by the staff there as well as some fallout looking robots. And in order to prove that they aren't discord mods, the kids express a desire to go outside to touch real grass. That's the first episode, and from there on it's a roller coaster ride until the very last one, so buckle up I guess. And when I say roller coaster ride, I mean emotionally, physically, and especially mentally because this show throws mystery after mystery at you. Not gonna lie, the details matter here. So if you're one that likes to pay attention and even re-watch stuff, maybe you'll be rewarded for your efforts here. But as I'm sure y'all know by now, if you watch this channel, I am not very smart. You might even say I'm a dumb, embarrassing man-child. So I'm gonna be real, I didn't really follow everything that was going on in this show. I don't know half the characters' names, I get confused over minor plot details, and even by the end of the show, I wasn't 100% sure what happened. But that's okay, because if the ride is entertaining enough, it doesn't really matter where you start or end or what the details are along the way. And really, keeping it simple like that gives you the best Heavenly Delusion experience, if you ask me. Because if you boil it down to its essence, Heavenly Delusion is a story about human perseverance and human cruelty. It's about weirdo nightmare creatures and people with laser guns and like Mario Kart racing or something, I don't know. Okay, I'm losing the point, but you get what I mean, right? If any of this sounds appealing to you, I think you're really gonna enjoy Heavenly Delusion. Uh, I mean, what else can I say? There was also an episode in it directed by Kai Ikarashi, you know, the guy from Studio Trigger fame. If you're a fanboy like me, you might find it worth watching this show just for that, honestly. But look, okay, so all of that analysis stuff and all the video essay buzzwords and all the fancy descriptions, that's all cool and everything, but it's only really convincing if you're a huge mega dweeb. Let me put y'all on to why you should really watch this show. Ah, Kiriko. If only we could all have such a great Onesan like you. <laughs> 